Namaskar. Welcome to Lunar Astro. So today's topic. I'm going to explain some of the questions which you guys have asked in the comment section or in the email. I'm going to clarify a lot of doubts today as well as I'm going to teach you the second layer of the Mercury in 8th house or the Jupiter in 8th house. Because why I feel the Mercury in 8th house or the Mer or Jupiter in 8th house is so important and how I'm using it in the predictions because when I teach to my students is, or whatever I release on the YouTube which are part of the class you guys get a glimpse of it. It's a two and a half hour lecture. We release always 15-20 minutes of it. And I saw that 8th house Mercury, a lot of people came back with the positive answer. Some of you have doubts regarding it. Like what if the Sun Venus is together, Sun Mercury is together, or Mercury Mars is there. I'm going to show you a couple of practical charts which I've done reading on. And I will tell you how actually it will get manifested when it comes on the own chart. Like even one of my own students said some Mercury in 8th house. In my chart it didn't work. Like everyone has been criminated properly. Then later on, when we looked into it, how it had been done, the things came true. So there are variations of every rule. This video, I'm going to tell you the variations of it. So first of all, let's start with the Mercury in the eighth house. From where this principle originated? Mercury in the eighth house, the red book says, that it is the flower or flowers which you offer to the dead body. In Hindi, it is known as the Murdeka Fulu. Now, this is not what the Lal Kitab meant. When whatever it is written in the Lal Kitab, please do not take it literally. Never ever do the remedies of Lal Kitab without considering what they actually meant. Because if the seventh house Jupiter, they're asking to remove the temple. This is not what they meant. We have covered it in, in the past. Jupiter in seventh house has a very deep meaning. Jupiter in sixth house has a very another deep meaning. Similarly, Mercury in eighth house, what Lal Kitab actually meant was that the last respects to someone in your family has not been paid off. That is why you have got the Mercury in the eighth house. Now, this Mercury in the eighth house, a lot of people will have, and different signs will have, different planetary combinations they will get, either Sun, Venus. Venus, Mercury, Mars, Mercury, whatever combinations you will get. And this Mercury in the 8th house is there before you were born. Like it was decided before you were born that you will get the 8th house Mercury because before you were born, someone in your family has not been criminated or the last rites were not pay, done properly. One of the charts which I, which I looked in last week, this native is on, this native is bedridden right now. He had a spinal injury. And after that, uh, after the operation, the operation went wrong. This guy was, is on bed right now. This guy has Sun, Mars, Mercury in the eighth house. It is in sign of Gemini. Now we know this Mars, Mercury combinations in the eighth house will give you a skin disease. A very simple combination that is. Eighth house Mercury is praised in all the classics of you see. But we know the Mars, Mercury combinations will give you the skin disease. The Sun, Mars, Mercury. Now I have to make a prediction that why this particular person is bedridden right now. Why no medicine is working. No, no pies are working. He's been to a lot of astrologers. And I, the only thing I ask them, who in your family, so I ask this native, you know, Sun, Mercury, Mars in 8th house. Sun, his father, Mercury, his brother's Father of siblings, Mercury, Mars is a disease, is a skin disease. I ask him who in your family or especially the father's family or father siblings has died after a skin disease and his last rites are not performed properly. Why eighth house is the last rites is because the third house and eighth house, these are the two gateways you have in your chart. When Jupiter is in 8th house, Lal Kitab says this particular person will get the blessings from outside the world because that's, because that's a gateway from where you get the blessings. But 
that's also represent curses as well if you read it properly it is two it's a two sides of one coin now if someone has to go out of the eighth house and there's a sun mercury mars over there if you're not helping that soul to go out properly you're not paying your last respects you're not performing all those rituals which has to be performed that is why you got the mercury in the eighth house and what happened was in in his family was that is father's un father's brother his uncle that native got a skin disease so bad that the hospitals will not they would take it the cremation ground refused to go near the body because of the, the disease was such infected so what they did they left that body paid someone just to burn it so they never performed the last rites properly when this has happened sun mercury mars in the 8th house there's a, there are another techniques of the 8th house but this is the one of the one of the things which are in the pending karma part you can predict lot of other things from the 8th house but see if someone of if any one of you has a mercury in the 8th house only mer not or any planet in the 8th house use that signification make other combinations in the 8th house and see and predict that this is not why not it has not happened like in this case it was father's sibling died from the skin disease similarly a native aquarius ascendant rahu in fifth gem in just sign of gemini mercury in the eighth in sign of virgo this native's grandfather because now the mercury is a fifth lord fifth house represents a grandfather this native's grandfather out of five siblings only one was present rest four were missing in the funeral in all those other rituals only one person was present one person did it somewhere outside the city and after that nothing was done that is why this native been born born with the mercury eighth house now i've used as a fifth lord in this i've, I've used as a karka in the last example i've used as a lord in this example you can use it both ways someone a lady had a jupiter and i think about two days back i was sitting in the office and somebody messaged on the office number that my kid has a jupiter in the eighth house and the kid is mute the kid is running the jupiter dasha right now i uh, i gave her six predictions regarding the jupiter in the eighth house the sign of virgo is also represents fighting the sign of jupiter jupiter was the second lord in his uh, chart there is a second lord in the chart which represents money and then all the other combinations when i see i ask another prediction whether at the time of funeral during this particular time period you can time time things as well did the fight between the siblings happen over who will do the who will spend the money on the last rites of this native and yes there always a fight between the siblings over this matter only that who will spend money who will spend the money why should i spend the money on the last rites a very big fight happened see i've used the sign of virgo fights so depending on what which particular sign it is there because the lal kitab or or all the lal kitab astrologers let me say are not using the sign qualities you should use the sign qualities you should make the sign of aquarius is there and the mercury is there that there will be fight regarding the inheritance because it's a gain house going in the 11 the gain house number 11 is going in the 8th house so fight regarding the inheritance or some tension regarding the inheritance inheritance might happen jupiter represents your holy waters jupiter represents brahman jupiter in the 8th house and now represents uh, ganga jal it means the during the last rites of the sign of virgo jupiter is there during the last rites the brahman is not been paid properly the nobody has done the final rites of flowing the ashes in the holy rivers that has not been done or some other problem is there even some kind of a fight with the brahman might have happened because the sign of virgo but so use signs signs are important along with the karakatva of the planets we are using the planet as a significator we are using planet as a lords but use the qualities of sign to make predictions that what has happened 
during the last rites. Now, based on that, make a remedy. Like if you have a Mercury Venus in the eighth house, we know Mercury Venus combinations will make clothes in sign of Virgo. In sign of Virgo, it's always make clothes or any kind of which is materialistic. Two, six, ten houses, they're very earthy components. You can you should feel it, right? If it's one five nine, donate the 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 wood because you know one five nine are fiery signs, so you should give the fuel for the woods. If it's three seven eleven. We should do the mantra job. If it's 4, 8, 12, we should do the tarpan kriyas for your ancestors or for someone who has, whose last rites has not been performed properly. The biggest secret of the Jyotish. This, if you do this, the, all those remedies which you're doing, look at the qualities of the sign. 159 are the fiery signs, so or, and they always represent future you should donate something related to fire. But if it's an eighth house, you should do, donate it in the crimination round. What in the crimination round? If it's a 3711 sign, this is our Aries sign, so the mantra job will be very beneficial. 2610 are the materialistic things. So that's why in this native's case, sign of Aquarius rising in the ascendant, Virgo, Mercury, Venus in the eighth house, so the remedy was donate, you know, the donate the sheets, with the, you know, when, whenever the, there's a dead body, people offer sheets as a respect, which is a respect to cover the, uh, the, the body. I said donate it, but there should be flowers on those sheets. Donate it in the crimination ground to anyone or whoever works in the crimination ground. Go ahead and donate it. What is going to happen? I mean, this when this native did it in three weeks, the native said it's like a magic which has happened. Magic. Several people who have done this remedy, and according to their science or according to their planetary combinations, trust me, their life changed because that is going to solve a lot of problems of your life if you solve that eight house. So go ahead, make that combination. See, I'm giving you that, these secrets. Doing the remedies of the three remedies, which I always prescribe to everyone. When it's a problem related to sun, like in the first chart, which, which I explained to you. Sun, Mercury, Mars in the eighth house in sign of Gemini. This native, I told him to do it on Sakranti. Why I said Sakranti? Because sun is very prominent in the eighth house. So any problems related to sun, do it on Sakranti. Any problems related to moon, do it on Mav Mavas or Poonamashi. On these three dates, donate whatever you can. On Sakranti day, you should donate wheat. Nowadays, nobody takes wheat or even the temple does not want to take the wheat. So donate the, the wheat flour. Tell oil. Jagri. This has to be donated in temple on Sakranti day. On Amavas, and Purmashi, donate, make a kheer in your house. If you can't make a kheer, if you're really busy, donate milk, sugar, rice separately, but give it out in temple. During these three nights, light a lamp under a people tree in the temple. Because what you're doing is you're providing way for your ancestors. You're providing light to your ancestors. You're providing whoever has not been fed properly in this lifetime or wherever in the last rites, whatever mistake you have done, you're nullifying those mistakes. You see, Mercury in eighth house, and like this is the observation of a student. She said, Mercury in the eighth house, these people talk a lot at the death ceremony. So this is a sin. When you are going in someone's death ceremony, and what you're doing is you're socializing over there because Mercury is the third house, natural, uh, natural planet for socialization. So what you're doing, you're going to this death ceremony, Mercury in the eighth house. And what you're doing, you're making contacts over there. You're, or you're continuously on your phone. You're not paying respect. You're just there because you have to be there. So when you're going to the, attend the death ceremony of someone, please make sure you do it very properly. Do not make mistakes over there. Do not use your phones over there when it, until and unless it's really necessary. Do not fight with Brahmins over there, Jupiter in the eighth house. Or do not show that I know everything regarding this, this procedure. Jupiter in the 8th house. You want to show your knowledge regarding that. Regarding the 8th house matters. 
So when you do this very properly, trust me, that eighth house matters problems will solve you. Uh, secondly, someone asked me in the comment section that I have a Jupiter retrograde and lightning idea has destroyed my life. Uh, respect it, sir. That's not true. Trust me, that's not true. Because Jupiter in the seventh house, having a temple in your house is not a bad thing. We have explained it in one of the earlier videos that Jupiter in the seventh house has a very deep meaning. What I'm doing right now is in a predictive astrology course only, we finished it, only recordings are available, but I want to teach the Lal Kitab. So in the Q&A sessions, I'm teaching one principle at a time of the Lal Kitab so that that dogma of the Lal Kitab should remove that Jupiter in the seventh house do not have temple in your home. This is wrong. This is not what the Lal Kitab meant. Just because some people cannot decode it, they are using it blindly. Like the Mercury in the eighth house, you do this remedy, it will get all right. Tell me if you have not performed the last rites of some native properly, how can removing a temple or Mercury in the eighth house, keeping a silver chains or doing something else is going to affect you? Because that's your karma. It's a pending karma book. People have not learned it or use it properly. But you should be very aware before doing the Lal Kitab remedies. Understand what it actually means. So this is what I'm doing. I'm in every QA session. Every Thursday we have a QA session every fourth night. Uh, uh, one for Hindi, one for English. I'm teaching one principle of Lal Kitab every time. So that at least my students, when they go out, they know and most of them know by now that this is the way Lal Kitab works. I'm teaching the principles of Lal Kitab, what is the deep meaning in it and how it is a pending karma book. It's a pending karma book, trust me. So my request to you all of you is do not believe what is written. Read between the lines. Learn to read between the lines. There's a very deep meaning in every sutra over there. Like sun in the seventh house, sun in Libra, the day of marriage, there will be fight will happen or some other problems will take place. There are, there are lists of the things which, which should happen when sun is in Libra or any malefic in Libra. Now, there are different rules and exceptions to it, but that does not mean that you should remove temples from your house or do anything which is considered as negative because everyone should have a temple at their house. So, see you guys next time. Thank you for watching. Like, share, subscribe the video. And also, if you want to follow us on Facebook, there's a link down below in the description section. See you guys over there. Thank you.